This video clarifies what compound and cascading disasters are, their characteristics and their impacts. So far, we have looked at some fundamental concepts of disaster risk management, taking them as single hazards or single disasters. Most of the disaster risk reduction research and strategies deal with hazards individually, one by one. However, with the increasing magnitude and frequency of disasters happening in the world today, the trend more and more is to have multiple disasters striking a community at the same time, and this is partly related to climate change. This worrying trend is also highlighted in the latest assessment of the IPCC AR6 report. Dealing with cascading and compounding disasters simultaneously makes it extremely difficult for government officials and other people in charge to respond to these events appropriately. People and authorities in charge need to be equipped with a better understanding and strategies to respond to such types of disasters. This lesson will give some measures to assess such risks, enhance resilience and implement these risk management strategies in society. The first approach to understanding compound and cascading disaster risk is by looking at how individual hazards connect and relate to each other in space and over a long time. Here we will mainly explain two types of hazard relationships, compound hazards and cascading hazards. Compound hazards happen when multiple disasters coincide in time or happen sequentially. In this case, hazards do not cascade, causing each other, they compound, meaning they reinforce each other, creating a more complex situation that magnifies the impact of the individual disasters. A hydrological hazard, such as a flood, can compound with a meteorological hazard, like a storm. A geological hazard, like an earthquake, can combine with a biological hazard, like COVID-19. In the case of Kyushu in 2020, the Kuma River overran its bank in 11 different locations and breached one levee, call it causing floods. At the same time, there were 12 landslide events. These disasters happened when those communities were battling the COVID-19 pandemic, a biological disaster of a different kind, making the disaster response more difficult. At the time, the authorities instructed more than 75,000 residents to evacuate in the prefectures of Kumamoto and Kagoshima, and 109 shelters were open in the region. However, they had to rely on local volunteers, since concerns about COVID-19 infection prevented volunteers from travelling from far away. Evacuees and local officials also raised concerns regarding emergency shelter. For instance, some evacuees arriving at shelters were asked to go elsewhere to maintain social distancing. Some evacuees chose to take refuge in their cars, while others stayed with friends. The other situation we can encounter are cascading hazards. Cascading hazards happen when one hazard type triggers another hazard in a series. Similarly, each cascading hazard could give rise to disasters, depending on the level of exposure and vulnerabilities. However, cascading disasters are usually non-linear and the impact of one disaster continues to advance beyond the location of impact or for an extended time. Compound and cascading hazards can combine different kinds of hazards, resulting in numerous combinations of possible disastrous situations and system-wide impacts. And when considering cascading hazards, a hydrological has disaster like a flood can cascade to create another hydrological disaster like a landslide, trigger a biological disaster producing waterborne diseases, and finally make a technological disaster in the form of a factory fire. To understand the char characteristics of compound and cascading disasters, we need to examine different factors, such as the following. Triggers or causes. First, you have a trigger that causes the disaster. These triggers can be a single hazard or a combination of hazards. It could be that a single hazard triggers other hazards over time. And there can also be complex interactions and non-linear feedback between the disasters. After the triggering events, you have the following. Occurrences. Disasters can occur simultaneously 
or successively. So not all compound disasters are simultaneous events. For example, even if heavy snow falls several weeks after an earthquake, it will still affect the earthquake's recovery process and make it very difficult. Disasters can also have a fast or slow onset. Slow start and an intensifying or intensified gradual progression to multiple areas and sectors. Scale. Disasters can reach various scales of exposure. They can have a small scale, just touching the local level, but may also grow to effect, effect national, regional and even global levels. For example, COVID-19 started as a local problem and at that time people would never have thought that the virus would spread globally and change people's lives almost forever. Impacts and damages. These impacts can be primary, taking a hit directly from the hazard. But there are also secondary and tertiary cascading impacts. There may be an out of control domino effect in the impact chain, affecting many connected systems. Moreover, there may be system wide and long lasting impacts affecting multiple sectors. Surprises and knock on effects to multiple sectors are also to be expected. Response. When there is no sufficient understanding of underlying cause and impacts, the response tends to be ad hoc and uncoordinated, since information and orders may come from different government agencies. Lack of information and coordination gaps might create confusion and ineffective response and recovery. Ultimately, what is needed is a coordinated, systematic response, considering all the sectors and areas that this hazard will affect. To be better prepared for compound and cascading disaster risks, we introduce the idea of impact chains as a methodology to analyse compound and cascading disaster risks. It is the chain of impacts caused by one impact triggering other impacts across different sectors, or a series of impacts in different sectors resulting in an enormous impact. Focusing on the endpoints of the chain, the outcomes can be as diverse as impacts on health, agriculture, forestry and water industry, on industry and economic activities, people's livelihoods, and impacts due to disruptions in infrastructure and lifelines. In the next lesson, we introduce a way to develop risk scenarios using a visualization tool of the impact chain. So that's it. We have come to the end of this lesson and the end of part one of the course, where we reviewed essential concepts in disaster risk reduction, including risk, exposure and vulnerabilities, you gain knowledge about compound and cascading disaster risks. We introduced key characteristics of compound and cascading risks to show what factors you need to pay attention to in order to prepare for multiple disasters. Let's now go to the next section of the course where you will assess disaster risks.